Welcome to another episode of Lunch with the Shark. Join us as we dive deep into discussions about business, accounting, and finance to help you build a business that thrives. Now sit back and have a bite with your host, the Shark CFO, Vidal Espinosa. Well, hello, hello, good afternoon. Welcome to a new edition of Lunch with the Shark. I am your host, Vidal, the Shark CFO Espinosa, and I am really happy to be here with you this Thursday afternoon. It's a chilly morning afternoon here in, in, in Baja. And um, damn, uh, I, was what, I was looking or going through my Facebook. Um, nowadays, I have very little time to go my, through my Facebook, which is really good because I'm not losing that much time. And I was seeing posts from news, news outlets and as well as friends and uh, and people that I know and I have on my Facebook. And uh, it actually snowed in some areas in Tijuana. So that means that there's snow up in the mountains in Julian and other areas in San Diego as well. So be careful if you're going out there and if you're going to get some apple pie from Julian, first of all, bring me some. And second, but no, that's not true. Uh, that's not true that it's the first one. That would be the second one. Uh, the first thing is be careful, take your precautions, bring uh, uh, chains for the tires. Uh, if your tires or vehicle is not equipped with uh, proper tires, but if you go up, do bring me some apple pie, uh, a whole apple pie, and I'll, I'll pay it. I'll pay uh, pay you here. Uh, and if you want to give it to us for free, that's perfectly fine. We accept gifts. So just bring us some. Be careful. Go out there. Enjoy. Relax. It's a very nice uh, morning, though. Um, again, it's an amazing view that I have here. I wish I was like moving a little bit. So I would really, really feel as if it was at a, at a uh, cruise. Uh, and if Mickey was right here, right next to me, or Minnie, or Daisy, or Pluto, or any of those characters, and uh, that would be more uh, uh, amazing. But I hope that in the next couple of months, we'll be able to hop into those small uh, uh, boats and go on a cruise with uh, Mickey and friends. I think it's gonna be until next year, not this year. But uh, we're going to Disney pretty soon. Uh, Disney is recalling 10,000 cast members uh, from furlough because they're gonna be opening late April, early May, uh, their operations. They actually came out and they said that even though they are allowed technically technically to open by April 1st, they can't because they have to first recall those uh, 10,000 cast members to come back and work uh, at the Magic, uh, not the Magic Kingdom, but uh, Disney World, Disneyland Resorts here in California. And they have to retrain them with the new procedures and systems in place so they can open and keep everyone that we're going healthy. Yes, that we're going because I'm going to be there the very first day that they reopen because it's history in the making. Even though it's not historically uh, uh, for the books, but after over 12 months of being closed, shut down, forced by the local government to shut down the business, they're reopening. And it's something to celebrate. Uh, we're fully vaccinated, uh, second shot already. So, hey, it is what it is. Local California residents can attend and I'm gonna take advantage of it. Uh, we need to make whatever we're going through we need to make it good. And if going to Disneyland, just sitting there and not being able to ride any attractions, I really freaking don't care. Just the smells and the food 
and people seeing and being at the magical place where you forget everything as soon as long as as soon as you enter those gates everything changes i don't know what there is everything changes at least for me at least for my family at least for us everything changes it's it's something different perception right and uh changing your your expectations for appreciations that's all there is to it when it comes to life you should live by that mo motto change your expectations for appreciations and your day your week your month your year it's gonna go great now uh, we were talking about we were talking yesterday about this is like holy crap we have a lot of problems a lot of issues blah 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 blah, blah. but what would be life without the salt and pepper which are your problems and and those are your mentally problems those are your mental problems those are not true problems because most of us we're looking for something to hold on. We're looking for something to just be occupied, be busy with. And those would be the problems, right? In theory, if you look really close to them, they're not problems. They're solvable. So if they're solvable and you're drawn, droning in them, eh, that's anxiety. That's that's Those issues are like, if you can control them, why get worry over them? You cannot control the amount of water the waves bring to the shore. You cannot control them, period. And if you're worried about the amount of water, seawater, it's coming to shore from those waves, there's no way you can control them. So if you see your problems that way, can I control them? No. Why worry about it? Instead, focus on how can you solve them. So today, what do we celebrate today? Today, it's National Proposal Prom Day. Unfortunately, a lot of our kids are not going to be able to go to a real prom this year like last year. They're going to new virtual proms. So even though you're not going to go to a real traditional, what we used to know as a prom, anybody out there, today's proposal prom day. So ask somebody to go virtually to your prom. So anybody out there, today's national prom proposal day. Also, we celebrate Okay, Na sorry, National Funeral Director and Mortician Recognition Day. Holy Chiniskis Triskis. I actually did not know that we had a day that we celebrate this type of job duties, National Funeral and Mortician Recognition Day. Uh, unfortunately, these days they are really busy. <laughs> Sorry, they are. They're extremely busy. They are overwhelmed. If there's a business that is thriving, it's the funeral services. But that's that's sad. It's sad that 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 business is thriving, right? At least they have something to do. So to all those funeral directors, morticians, I guess, happy funeral director mortician day to you in the US. Interesting. There's actually, oh, yesterday we celebrated as well, and I forgot, uh, we celebrated the saint for the beer makers, which is, I'm gonna tell you, yesterday it was San Arnulfo. He was, he is the patron of the uh, beer drinkers and beer makers. So to everybody that loves beer and makes beer, happy belated San Arnulfo's day, I guess. So as I was telling you, uh, Disneyland, Disneyland Resorts in California, recall 
10,000 cast members and they're actually waiting for them to either come from where they are or gather their belongings and join them, accept the, the, the onboarding process. And part of that onboarding process, it's the training. They're going to be trained and retrained on their current uh, uh, job duties and on the new procedures. So Walt, uh, D Walt Disney Organization, Disneyland Resorts, it's big on uh, uh, training. They hate probability. They hate to leave anything out to the, let me see what I can do. That doesn't mean that they limit their team members, their cast members on thinking on their own, right? They have lead way. Also, Disneyland organization, Disneyland Resorts, their first, their first uh, uh, element, it's safety. So they need to be trained on safety. Well, this week we are talking about training, training your team members, training your team, training your business, letting people know that help you in your company how you like things be done. You need to train them. If you have one, two, three, a hundred millions of, of team members, you need to train them. You cannot assume that they know your procedures, your systems. So today we're gonna talk about the most effective training methods. Like in everything, there's methods, there's ways of training, there's ways of doing things. So what we need to do is research on training methods. It's essentially to avoid the unnecessary costs that comes with training. Listen, you're not going to reinvent the wheel when it comes to management methods, training methods doing certain things methods it's already re it's already invented it's already created you just need to do a little bit of research ask your mentor or coach or advisor to guide you through the right path stop trying to invent a new training method before you train your team Get your company off the ground with whatever it's at your disposition, with whatever somebody else already prove that the method works. Once you've done it, once you've achieved success utilizing those methods, then go ahead and try to invent a new method. But in the meantime, utilize whatever has been proven to work, utilize whatever method you bought in. Franchises, you buy a franchise because you believe in their business model, you believe in their method, you believe in their training, you believe in their systems and procedures. It's a proven method. It's a proven business model. So you're not going to cut corners because first of all, you'll be in, uh, uh, um, you'll be infringing in the agreement that you signed with a franchisee, franchisor, sorry, and you're not gonna make it. It's like, why my McDonald's is not doing so great? Well, because instead of buying the fries from, from directly from McDonald's, you are buying them at bonds. First, you are infringing on your agreement, and second, you're not following the model. So instead of cutting corners, instead of trying to do it on your own, because the learning curve is this big, instead of reducing the learning curve to be like this, shorter, and the shorter the learning curve, the less money you waste, the more money you'll make, follow methods. Follow a proven method, right? but follow it to the dot. I was, uh, yesterday, I had the, uh, the, the, uh, the what, what could I call it? We had, I had, I was invited to, uh, to talk to the Hispanic Chamber of E-Commerce uh, with my friend, 
Taide, Taide, thank you so much. And uh, we spoke about cash flow and cash flow improvements and things like that. And I was talking to them and say, hey, most of us, if not all of us, we've come across our path on buying programs online that teach us how to maximize our profit or how to develop a product or how to give a seminar or conference online, live events, a method. We bought a program and they tell us, you know what? My program is a a 30 day program where I'm going to hold your hand and tell you how to do it. Most of us are so stubborn. Most of us are so have our heads so up our asses with our egos that we buy it because, okay, we are going to see what they're going to teach us, right? And then we start going through the program and the program tells us step one, do this, step two, do that, blah, 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 and step by step. And I, you glance through the whole program if, if you open it and then say, you know what? I'm going to just do step one, two, three, but then I'm going to jump from step three to step seven because I already know step four, five, and six. I already implement it in not that order, but I already, it's not gonna work for my business. Then we go seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then we end up the program and nothing happens in our company. Nothing happens in our business. We're not successful implementing the program the method and then we call the 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 producer the 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 service provider and say you know what your program doesn't work i want a refund in most of those programs they give you money back guarantee that's part of their advertising if you follow the program certain way so the person on the other line or on the other side of the email says, hey, you know what? Send me your work papers. Send me this so we can validate that you implemented the program, step one through 20th or whatever. And then we'll refund you because if your program didn't work, we will guarantee it. You send them all the documents and they come back to you and say, hey, what about step four, five, six? What about step 12, 11, 12, 13, 14? Are you gonna you're gonna reply? Yeah, it doesn't apply to my business. I didn't I didn't implement them. Guess what? They're gonna tell you go back, redo the program, and implement it. No, 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 no. This is not for my business. I know my business better than you do. Blah 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 blah. Then you start fighting, you don't get a refund. If you were to implement step by step, one through twenty without cutting corners, you would have achieved success. We spoke about that yesterday in this in this little uh, uh, conference. And I said, it's like doing bread. If you don't let the yeast blossom, your bread, your bread, it's not gonna be fluffy. Your bread is gonna become a cookie, cookies. You must follow every single step on making bread. You need to let the, the yeast blossom. Then you incorporate it to your dough. You need, that, you need to let that dough rest and rise. And then you bake it. Otherwise, guess what? You're fucked. You are getting cookies. You're not getting bread, and then you're gonna ask yourself, why didn't the bread rise? Why is this so hard? What did I do wrong? Well, you didn't follow instructions. You didn't follow a method, okay? So based on research, here are three, a list of 13 core methods. The first one is a case study method. The case study is a proven method of training and is known to efficiently boost learning motivation. Talk about true cases. What do we do here? Everything I tell you is based on true events. 
I am not making the shit up. First hand cases with my clients, cases with prospect clients, cases with past clients. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what I see first hand. I am not just an accountant that sits behind his computer, does numbers, and that's it. No, we are hands on. I can tell you case by case, studies, results, positive and negative. And negative results are amazingly better than positive results because if you learn from the negative results, fuck, those are full of knowledge. So case study method. Number two, game-based training. Games have been used for many educational purposes, including training. Using games for education, it's affordable, competitive, and motivational, especially in the digital area. People, if you're having fun, you'll learn a lot. In training, it's about learning. Training, it's about conditioning your team to what you want them to learn. So if you utilize game-based training, they're gonna have fun. And in the meantime, they're going to learn what you want them to learn. Get them the cash flow uh, uh, game board from uh, 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 to, uh, uh, Kiyosaki. Rich dad, poor dad. Teach them about the four quadrants in the cash flow market. Get Monopoly. You'll learn a lot from your team members and everybody there when you play Monopoly. You'll learn a lot of their personality. Number three, internships. Internships are great for both sides. You as the company can benefit from the help of the person who's gonna internship for you, okay? They can benefit by guidance, and training by hands on on the job, right? It's not the same to learn certain things in the classroom than actually in the company. Job rotation. Job rotation can do a lot in terms of employee motivation and commitment. Disneyland, Walt Disney organization, it's huge on job rotation. They don't just leave you in one position. They actually want you to move around so you can learn different areas. That actually, it's a win-win situation. Job shadowing. Job shadowing serves to generate employee engagement and interest. This type of training method, I highly recommend for real estate agents. If you're a high grossing real estate agent, get yourself shadows. Get yourself thirsty, and I mean thirsty individuals that you can actually mold to you. You'll get a lot of results, positive results, and I can attest to that because one of my good friends that it's a real estate agent, high net uh, uh, revenue uh, uh, individual. It's a, implementing this method after I uh, we gave him some consulting and he called it a couple of months ago and said, you know what? That's probably one of the best advice you've given me on getting myself shadows. Number six, lecture. Lecture are often uh, dreaded and ridicule, but they are the most commonly used training techniques. Make them fun though, make them fun. Don't make them boring, don't make them boring. Mentoring and apprenticeship. When companies plan to groom people for promotion and growth, this is the best training method to use. Get under the wing, the wing of the CEO, the CFO, any C-level. If you're starting, get yourself under their wing their flight, their path, it's going to lift you up and you're gonna learn a shit load of things. They're gonna notice and they're going to embrace you and help you if they're true leaders. Number eight, programmed instruction. Program instruction doesn't work without self-discipline. 
So it is the most effective in cases when some staying strain from the program isn't detrimental to the company. This is seminars. These are uh, uh, programs like I was talking to you, like follow steps, like uh, learn how to do your own marketing, learn to do how you do your own Facebook ads and things like that. Role modeling. This is the counterpart of the lectured training method. One that promotes practice and lifelike models. Who's your role model? Who do you admire? Who do you want to be like when you grow up? I know you're already grown up, but who do you want to be like when you grow up? Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Bill Clinton. Hey, Donald Trump, who do you want to be like when you grow up? Follow them, mimic them, imitate them. The good things that you believe they're good. Okay, that's based on your belief because he or she would be your role model. That's who you want to be. Role play. With role playing, trainees can practice what they've learned in a personalized and simulated situation. Before you go and spend a shitload of money, role play with your friends, with your family, with possible clients. Okay, and it's a pretend, pretend before you go and invest a shitload of money on a product that you think, you believe it's going to solve a pain point on your clients. Maybe it's just your belief. Maybe it's a shitty program. Maybe it's a shitty product and it doesn't work. It's something that you want, not what you want, not what your clients want. So role play simulation simulation becomes more affordable every day as such it's commonly used for training that is considered costly or dangerous simulations like air uh, uh, pilots for the airplanes uh drivers those utilize simulated uh, training methods stimulus-based training stimulus-based training it's a bit unconventional but it's becoming more popular as time passes. It's widely applied method that might make trainees a bit uncomfortable, but can also enable them to acquire through knowledge faster than the other methods of training described here. Stimulus-based training would be for a sales position, for instance. If you want to create a good sales person, it's very difficult to teach them how to sell. But if you incentivate them and you stimulate their, their appetite, because any salesperson, it's, it's hungry for this, right? And if you stimulate that, you're going to get a lot of good training. Team training. Team training has a bit and a big and important goal to connect your team as such it doesn't focus on training as individuals like the previous methods rather than team building it's very important to integrate you're going to get very very far with your team than by yourself you're going to get faster it's going to take uh, 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 more time to get where you want with a team but you need a team you need people around you underneath you on top of you on your sides you need people surrounding you okay so train your team bottom line this type of training methods do not make a full list but they are the general methods that might be uh, uh, the best option or an option for you. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, please. They already invented it. Try to perfect it. Make one of these methods become an excellent, become an expert in one of those methods and then move to another one because 
you need to combine, okay? Every company needs a combination of all these methods and or others. Just become the expert on some of those methods. Don't try to perfect it. Don't try to reinvent them. They work. They work magically. It's been great seeing you today. We're going to end up today's show with a quote from Irene Rosenfeld, former CEO of Kraft Foods. And she said, I believe very strongly in the value of having a diverse team around me that comes from very different backgrounds and different point of views. Damn! Guess what? She is 100% right. You, as the CEO, do not have every single freaking answer. You, as a CEO, are not the most knowledgeable in your company. And if you think you are, you're fucking crazy. It's been great seeing you today. Bon appetit. Ciao. Thank you for listening to Lunch with the Shark. If you would like to set up a consultation with the Shark CFO, Vidal Espinosa, visit his website www.invictus-advisors.com and don't forget to subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter and LinkedIn.